Class of 2017, please be seated. Good afternoon. Welcome to Glenelg High School's 2017 commencement ceremony. My name is Holton Moreno, and I'd like to start off by extending a warm welcome to all of the family and friends that have joined us here today. We are all so excited that you're here to celebrate with us. I'm sure that some of you may have already received your graduation gifts or plan to do so, but I can't help but think of all the gifts that Glenelg has given each and every one of us. To name a few, the gift of learning, learning that sometimes the best gifts are intangible, having a shoulder to cry on at times, and sometimes being that shoulder. Also, the gift of support, having the support system to lean on when you fall back down, but also the gift of strength and being to stand up when you fall down. Glenelg has given me so many gifts, but the most important gift being the gift of love, being showered with it from your family, friends, faculty, and staff. This includes the amazing PTSA members who have been with us these past four years. These are the people who put together our proms, homecomings, fundraisers. Without you guys, we wouldn't have had any of that. So thank you for all of your support and your commitment to us. You may not see it as often as you'd like, but your teachers do love you. If they didn't, they would not be up at 5 a.m. getting ready to see your less than welcome faces at the 725 bell. We are all so lucky to go to such an amazing school full of amazing people and be a part of, in the words of Mr. Burton, a true gladiator family. And thank you, Mr. Burton. You were sent to the middle of nowhere to a school with narrow halls with a group of students who enjoyed tailgating at 6 a.m. and blasting rap music much earlier than that. So thank you for your bravery and everything that you've done for us this year because you are the face of our Gladiator family. The faculty and staff here at Glenelg have gone above and beyond to put you on the seat that you are in today. And for that alone, we should be incredibly grateful. I'm so thankful for all the love that I've seen in classrooms over the years because without that, I wouldn't be standing up here speaking to all of you today. That is the gift that I wish I could repay and will forever cherish. Thank you and congratulations to Glenelg High School's class of 2017. Please rise for the singing of the national anthem. Please be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Caroline Kwan, and I have the distinct pleasure of introducing these wonderful people seated before you. At this time, I would like to welcome the distinguished guests here with us today. Guests, if you would please stand when I call your name, and audience members, Please hold your applause until all of our guests have been introduced. The Honorable Alan Kittleman, Howard County Executive. Ms. Cynthia Valencourt, Chairman of the Howard County Board of Education. Ms. Sandra French, Member of the Howard County Board of Education. 
Ms. Christina Delmont Small, member of the Howard County Board of Education. Dr. Michael J. Martirano, Interim Superintendent, Howard County Public School System. Ms. Linda T. Wise, Deputy Superintendent, Howard County Public School System. Senator Gail H. Bates, District 9. Delegate Trent M. Kittleman, District 9A. Delegate Warren E. Miller, Dis District 9A. Dr. Helen A. Nixon, Chief Human Resources and Development Officer, Howard County Public School System. Mr. Frank V. Easton, Executive Director, School Improvement and Administration, Howard County Public School System. Dr. Gina Masella, Administrative Director, High Schools, Howard County Public School System. Dr. Da Mr. David P. Burton, Principal, Glenel High School. Dr. Brian Bayshore, Assistant Principal, Glenel High School. Mr. David Struthers, Assistant Principal, Glenel High School. Mr. Clovis Thomas, Assistant Principal, Glenel High School. Mr. Daniel Sageman, Activities and Athletics Manager, Glenel High School. Mr. Carl J. Schindler, Principal, Applied Research Lab. Mr. Larry Cohen, former member of the Howard County Board of Education. <laughs> Mr. Philip Singleton, 2017 Teacher of the Year and English Instructional Team Leader. <laughs> Mr. James McVicker, Class of 2017 Class Advisor, Glenel High School. Dr. Stephen Burnett, Student Services Instructional Team Leader. Mrs. Carolyn Devlin, Counselor, Glenel High School. Mrs. Mindy Hirsch, Counselor, Glenel High School. Mrs. Karen Hoffman, Counselor, Glenel High School. Ms. Lene Nelson, Counselor, Glenel High School. Mrs. Emily Borgia, Fine Arts Instructional Team Leader. Mrs. Carol Dorman, Math Instructional Team Leader. Mr. Nicholas Formica, CTE Instructional Team Leader. Mrs. Denise Frank, World Language Instructional Team Leader. Mr. Matthew Kinlock, Ninth Grade Instructional Team Leader. Mr. Kendall Morton, Science Instructional Team Leader. Mr. William Regal, Social Studies Instructional Team Leader. Mr. Jeremy Snyder, Special Education Instructional Team Leader. And Ms. Aracelis Vrea, Teacher Development Liaison, Glenel High School. Good afternoon, everyone. We're so glad you can all be with us here on this special day. It's so crazy to see how far we've all come. Class of 2017, we've been through a lot over the years, but we finally made it. From getting shoved into lockers by seniors to today, our own graduation, we have been together through so many events and milestones, and now we're about to start a whole new chapter of our lives. To give you an idea of how much we and the world have changed since we started high school, here's a recap. So please, can we have your attention? Students, we'll give you a moment to put your fidget spinners away. You too, really? <laughs> Thanks. First, we were six inches shorter and 30 pounds lighter. Blurred Lines was the song of the summer, and Thrift Shop had everyone going to Goodwill. Frozen and Monsters University had just come out. And What Does the Fox Say was all over the internet. Wait, what does the fox say? Ring, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> we came into high school very optimistic, but we had no idea what the next four years were going to look like. Sounds familiar, right? However, after the first couple weeks, the blasting of rap music from pickup trucks in the parking lot at 7 a.m. became strangely familiar. And maybe even comforting. Freshman year actually had some really great moments. Forget freshman year, I can't even remember if I brushed my teeth this morning. But I do remember football winning the Elgar Trophy. And The Little Mermaid was the first production we got to see as high schoolers. Where we learned that our theater department is seriously amazing. We got to go to our first high school dance, and I'm happy to say we've gotten a lot better at dancing since then. But the dances have gotten a lot worse. I mean better. I mean more appropriate. Then sophomore year came around, and the first AP class was available to us. Ah, yes. AP government and CNN student news. I loved Carl Azus. Shout out to Mr. Mail, even though we never got a shout out from Carl. The year started strong, with the football team beating River Hill for the first time in a while and being regional champs. 
and volleyball made it to the state finals after winning county and regional titles. We got to play in a powder puff game and we definitely let the freshmen win. As usual, we had the luxury of being, of being guinea pigs, this time for the park test. We were also the first class to organize a Sadie Hawkins dance, even though no one went. Hey, I was there. <laughs> Anyways. Sophomore year was about figuring out what high school was about, really committing to Spirit Week, going to all the sporting events, theater productions, and the beginning of concerts here at Merriweather. As a result of our parents risking their lives in those passenger seats, a lot of us got our licenses, which made for a great summer. A summer that came to a screeching halt when we reached the dreaded junior year. Stop. Please stop. I'm having flashbacks. Which is when we also realized that we knew nothing about being a high schooler, that we actually needed to try, and the last two years actually mattered. A lot. Nod your head if you wish you'd figured that out earlier. Along with the course load of junior year, we had to take the SATs, ACTs, and once again, we were the guinea pigs, this time for the new SATs. On the bright side, tennis took home two regional titles, hockey won the cup, and of course, girls basketball and lacrosse won state championships. We held the first run for Rod in honor of Mr. Rodney Williams, an amazing counselor and friend to all the kids at Glenelg. We ask that you join us in a moment of silence in honor of Mr. Williams. As upperclassmen, we got to go to our first prom at the aquarium. We had the wonderful pleasure of having an entire week off for snow and then having to make up an entire week of snow. And losing all motivation when the seniors left. I lost all my motivation when Harambe was murdered. God bless his soul. For those of you who don't know, we lost our dear companion Harambe exactly a year ago this past Sunday. He was murdered in cold blood for simply playing with a child. Let us take a moment of silence for our fallen hero, Harambe. Well, then it was our turn. We were finally seniors. We walked in those doors like, we are the captains now. We started senior year with Can Jam in the parking lot and the stress of college applications. But then the fun stuff came, like our last spirit week, and we went hard. Oh yeah, we did. We had our senior tailgate at the fairgrounds, followed by the best color day ever. The fire alarm went off at our last homecoming. We had a blast at the crab feast. Our football team brought the Elgar Trophy back home again, and dance team won states, again. Did we beat River Hill this year? Ha! <laughs> did we beat River Hill this year? Football? Yep. Soccer? Yes. Field hockey? Yep. Golf? Mm hmm. Volleyball? Check. Basketball? Check. Both teams? Oh, yeah. Wrestling? Yep. Hockey? Yes. Lax? Mm hmm. Both? You know it. Tennis? Yep. Softball? Check. So, yeah, I'd say we beat River Hill this year. Allied Sports also kicked major butt and won the Super Bowl this year. We also got another girls' state lax championship title. The Glenelg Theater Department performed their first straight play with Lend Me a Tenor and had a great last performance with Sioux School in the spring. <laughs> Glenelg Broadway Connections swept us away, as usual, this year with Aladdin. And our music department had a clean sweep at Orlando. They did really awesome last year, too. And the year before. And the year before. But then when those acceptance, acceptance letters started rolling in, our motivation started rolling out. We had a whopping one snow day this year and two delays. Thanks, global warming. And with the end of AP testing, we got ready for our senior prom, our award ceremony, the senior picnic, class night, and last but not least, graduation. We celebrated the end of an amazing year with a tailgate on the last day of school. Shout out to Mr. Burton. Looking back over the past four years, we've experienced some monumental changes in our lives together. Some of us participated in our first presidential election, which saw Donald Trump take the reins from Barack Obama as our president. We saw an equally important change in our own administration, with Principal Burton taking over as top dog because Schindler had to get back to school. <laughs> we got to welcome the only part of Glenelg that is an antique, the new turf field. At the end of the day, I'm really gonna miss a lot about Glenelg. I'll miss the freezing Friday nights in the bleachers and yelling at freshmen to cheer. I'll miss spirit weeks, homecomings, and proms. I'll miss tech weeks and tryouts and the random English classes where I laughed so hard I cried. Thanks, Mr. Singleton. I'll even miss almost getting murdered anytime I walk in the parking lot because I'm the size of most of your truck tires. But I won't miss college apps and 6 a.m. alarm clocks. Amen to that. 
but I'll definitely miss Mr. Struthers reminding me that I'm the best student at Glenelg. Whoa, whoa, what do you mean? Well, in all four years, he came into all my classes telling me how, how we were the best students. And sorry to say, but I was the only common factor in all those classes. Uh, he said that in all my classes, too. Yeah, me too. Same. Struthers. <laughs> well, we want to wish everyone the best of luck in their next step, whether it be college, the workforce, the military, or your own unique journey. We ask that you don't forget all the memories you've made with the people sitting next to you. Yeah, guys, it's been a really great four years. You guys are the only people I'd wake up at 3 a.m. and cover myself in paint for. You all have taught me so much, and I cannot wait to see all the incredible things you do. Thank you to all the staff at Glenelg, our parents and families, and of course, all of our peers. Thank you for being you, and thank you for making our high school experience so incredible. Congratulations, Class of 2017. We did it. Okay, I'm sure you've all waited long enough. You may now take your fidget spinners back out. I'm Jenna. Xander. Ramsey. Alex. And we, we are, are the Four, four Horsemen. horsemen. Good afternoon, my name is Lainey Tracy and I'm a part of the 2017 graduating class. A great teacher is someone who has influence every day, even in small ways that are not often measurable. 
These teachers go above and beyond their given administrative and educational duties in order to inspire and advocate for their students, creating a better school community. This teacher is an excellent example of brilliance both in and out of the classroom. It is my honor to be able to introduce the 2017 Teacher of the Year, Mr. Philip Singleton. A native of Northwest England, Mr. Singleton has degrees in English and Linguistics from the Universities of Lancaster and Leeds in the United Kingdom. He received his teaching qualifications from Lancaster and Trinity College in London. Although Mr. Singleton began his professional life as a police officer in the Greater Manchester Police Force, since then, he has certainly made his mark in the education world. He has taught English, agricultural science, history, and PE, among other subjects, in Tanzania, the Bahamas, where he also drove the school bus, the Sultanate of Oman, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, the United Kingdom, and most recently, the United States. For the last 23 years, Glenelg High School has been lucky enough to have him as an English teacher. It is clear that he enjoys teaching, supporting, and advocating for his students. The class of 2017 admires his work ethic and dedication to the Glenelg community. Thank you for all you have done for so many of us. I am proud to introduce Mr. Philip Singleton. Thank you, Lainey, that's very kind of you. So, today is the last time we'll be together before you go off and make your way in the world. It's a special day. And if you're anything like I was at your age, after 12 or 13 years of schooling, you've probably had just about enough of people like me telling you what to do and how to do it. It's time for you to go off and experience and find out about the world in your own way, and that's how it should be. But here's the thing. When you graduate, when you walk across this stage, as you will in a very short time, you'll cross over a threshold into an adult world which, take it from me, is a wonderful place, but which, let's face it, has a few imperfections in it. And if we're going to find a cure for cancer or bring an end to hunger and poverty in the world, among many other things, the chances are that it's your generation which will be the one to do that and not mine. It will be you and not all of us on the stage here. So all of us have lots of hopes and dreams invested in all of you. And my hope is that you'll go off from here today and have happy and productive lives. But in doing so, find a way to make a difference for those who might not have your advantages and opportunities. And in doing that, make the world a better place for your children and your children's children after them. Now, I can't tell each one of you exactly how to do that. But I've been a teacher now for almost 40 years. You can tell that by looking at me, every gray hair a student. And in that time, I think I've learned one or two things from my many students in different parts of the world. You remember Tim O'Brien. He wrote The Things They Carried, that great book, which most of you read this year. And he said, the only way to communicate things that only you have experienced is to tell stories. And you know I could stand here all day and tell stories, but today I've only got time for two. And I'd like to share just two of those things that have been important lessons for me over the years in the hope that they might have some meaning for you, the lessons I learned from two young men that I taught many, many years ago. And to do that, I'd like to take you on a short journey. It's a journey that starts 40 years ago in a place on the other side of the world in East Africa, where I worked in my first teaching job. I was a VSO teacher. That's the British equivalent of the Peace Corps. And it was in the country of Tanzania. And when I got there, I thought I knew some things about the world from my education and my upbringing. But pretty soon I found that I really wasn't as smart as I thought I was, and I actually had an awful lot to learn myself. When I got to the school, at the end of a very long railway line, almost in the middle of Africa, I found that my students had nothing. They had the clothes they stood up in and nothing else. 
But they were lucky, and they knew it, because at that time in Tanzania, only one in a hundred kids actually got to attend secondary school. And if that had been the case for your class today, there would have been about three of you sitting down there, and this would have been a very short ceremony indeed. One of my jobs there, in addition to teaching English, was to raise pigs and chickens so we could sell them to make money for the school. Can you imagine doing that at Glenelg? Well, perhaps some of you might be able to. Um, but we don't need to because we have a budget. But there were no negotiations about the budget in that school in Africa because the budget was zero. It was nothing. And yet the students had this fantastic, almost life or death motivation. And at that school, it was called Bwiru Secondary School, there was a young man who is quite simply, and with all due respect to present company here, the most remarkable student I have ever taught in my life. And his name was Kasim Saidi Mwitondi. Now, I taught him English in what was the equivalent of 11th grade. But Kasim had a challenge which went beyond being poor. Kasim had a language problem. You see, his first language was his tribal language, the language he used at home with his family. And his second language was Swahili, which was the lingua franca used in the whole country. It's, it's how he communicated on a daily basis. His third language was Arabic, the language of his religion, because Kasim was a Muslim. And his fourth language, the language of virtually his whole education, was English. Now, how many of us here today have a fourth language, let alone be able to do all of our schooling in it? Well, Kasim was fortunate. He graduated from high school. He went on to get a degree in some form of engineering from the University of Dar es Salaam. And then he got lucky in ways that students in Tanzania rarely got lucky in those days. He got a scholarship to do postgraduate work um, abroad. But it wasn't to the United States or to Britain, but to a university in Sofia, in Bulgaria where he would have to communicate and study in a very difficult Slavic language, which he had to learn from scratch. Effectively, his fifth language. And he did learn that language, and he did graduate with a degree in what passed for computers in those days. And he went back to his country to work at making it better for all those whose lives hadn't been as fortunate as his, to make a difference in his world. So when I've had some problem in my own life, I've often thought of Kasim and how single-minded and determined he was for himself and for his own people. And it gives me a sense of both humility and also understanding that when those obstacles seem impossible and insurmountable, if you never give up, you can get around most of them. So here I am. I'm hoping that you'll go out and you'll make a difference in the world. But how will you know that what you're doing is making a positive difference for anyone, if you really are doing any good. Because we want to know things now. We collect data, we look at numbers and trends, but the truth is, most of the time, you really won't know. In 1985, I went to teach in the Sultanate of Oman. It's that little country on the northeast part of the Arabian Peninsula. And at that time, it had only been a country for 15 years. And just 15 years before I got there, there had been one mile of blacktop road in the whole country, one clinic in the capital area, and one school for boys. No schools for girls at all. And after they found oil and the wealth started to flow in, they opened schools for both boys and girls throughout the country. And I taught English at one of them a place called Rui in Muscat, the capital. I taught boys in 12th grade. They came to school. They were dressed in national dress. Um, and then they went home after learning English from me, and they lived the rest of their lives in Arabic. So what possible good was I doing there? Um, I didn't know that for a long time. And then there came, quite recently, this little echo from the past. About six months ago, I was checking my email, as you do, and I opened one which said, are you the Mr. Philip who taught at Rui Secondary School in 1985? 
If you are, please reply. If not, please discard this message. And I was tempted to send it to the same place I send the emails that you get telling me my uncle has left $600 million if I'll only give him details of my bank account. But I didn't. I opened it. And it came from a man called Zaki Mazrawi, and it had two pictures attached to it. One of him as an 18-year-old, and one as a man now in his late 40s wearing a kuma, a mani cap, and a dish dasher, his national dress. And I recognized him instantly as one of my old students. And he told me they were having a class reunion, and they'd love to hear about where I was and what I was doing. And he also told me this. He told me that after high school, he'd gone on to the University of Oman to do a business degree, where most of his courses were in English. And then he'd gone on to do postgraduate degrees from the University of Hull in England, where all of his studies were in English. And now he was back in Oman, running the family business with four kids and a successful life. But what he also told me was that his daughter was now studying chemical engineering at the University of London. And she was about to graduate and return to Oman and take her place working in the Ministry of Petroleum in that country where, as a woman in the work face, place before I got there, no woman could ever hope to possibly even attend school, let alone be a high-ranking manager in a government agency. You may not know for most of your life if what you're doing is making a positive difference in the world. But along the way, there will be little clues and epiphanies to show you that, yes, you are. Yes, you have. And if you stay true to yourself and in your efforts to make life better for those around you, and those who come after you, then in my experience, even if you aren't financially wealthy, your life will be rich and happy and worthwhile. And that's what's important. Class of 2017, it's been a privilege to teach you and to know you and to speak to you here today. Go and discover the world, change it for the benefit of others, and do it with a gracious and an open heart. They say in Swahili, Kwaheri Tutuanana, it means goodbye, we will see each other again. I wish you productive, prosperous, and joyful lives. Keep in touch. Good luck, and may your God go with you. Thank you. Very well done, Mr. Singleton. Good afternoon, gladiators. This is a celebration. Good afternoon, gladiators. Much better. My name is David Burton, and I'm the very proud principal of Glenelg High School. Before I present the graduates, I would like to call up our county executive and Glenelg parent, Mr. Adel Kitterman, to the uh, podium to make remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Burton. Okay, I got to get over with first, I got to embarrass my son. Wave. Yeah, James. <laughs> or as he's known at home, Jamer. Uh, Jamer. Anyway, congratulations to all of you on behalf of everyone in Howard County. I, I give you their congratulations. It's exciting to be here. I tell you, they saved the best graduation for last. <laughs> and I've attended the previous 11, and I had just been waiting for this moment. Uh, it's just so great to be with you. So many of you I know, since you were this tall, and to see where you're coming now and where you are, it's amazing. And it's so much fun. It's a little sad. I see a, a woman up there who I know very well. My wife is a little sad. It's our, our youngest is graduating. Uh, and we still have one teaching here, so we, I think we'll have a Glenelg connection for a while. But, um, but the fact that, that I've got a chance to see you guys grow and become great women and men has been a great pleasure of mine. So I thank you for letting me see what you would have been doing. I would ask you graduates to think about the people who are behind you and on your sides, the people who have sacrificed for you for a long, long time because they care about you, they love you,
They will only want what's best for you. So if we could please thank your parents and your family members for all that they have done for you to get you here today. And also a special thank you to the administrators, uh, both Mr. Schindler and Mr. Burton, and all the uh, faculty, uh, the great coaches, the great music department that have been, meant so much to our family over the last, I guess, 12 years since Haley started and James is leaving. Um, I just want to thank, Glenel family is tremendous. So faculty, administrators, thank you. Now, last week, or actually just earlier this week, I should say, Monday, we honored the individuals who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we could be where we are today, that we could have the life we have at Glenelg and throughout Howard County, Maryland, and our country. People who were willing to sacrifice everything for people they didn't even know. And we honored them on Monday. But I also today would like us to honor those who are in our attendance today who have served our country in the military service, whether you be a veteran or an active duty military person. If you could please stand so we could acknowledge you. Please. <laughs> Veterans, please stand. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your commitment to our country uh, and for letting us live in this great land. Also, I know I was able to go to the award ceremony for these seniors. I know there are several that are going to uh, military academies and others who are going into the military. If you could please stand up so we can congratulate you for what you're doing. Anyone, 2017 class. Thank you for your commitment to service and for being willing to stand in the gap so that we can continue to have this great country. So with that, I would just ask you uh, to remember what you've learned at Glenelg, the friends you've made in Glenelg, and to remember to pay back what all these other folks have done for you, those who have died, those who have sacrificed, and be kind. Be kind wherever you go, because as Mitchell Singleton said, you won't know sometimes what the effect is when you're kind, but it's contagious. It makes other people be kind, and I think we need to have a little more kindness in the world. So do that, gladiators. Go for it, 2017. Congratulations. I must say, can we please give it up one more time for our Honorable County Executive? This was the most difficult speech I think he's had to give. I know that because I talked to him. At this time, I would also like to uh, uh, bring up Mr. Larry Cohen, past board member, to bring remarks to the class of 2017. Thank you. Wow. Good afternoon, Glenel, class of 2017, and welcome to graduation day, Thursday, June 1st, 2017. I'm Larry Cohen, and as always, I hope you're all doing well. I know you are. Congratulations, mission accomplished. This is a very big day for all of you. Mission accomplished, give yourself a round of applause. Thank you so much for the opportunity and privilege to have gotten to know you over the past four years. I want you to know how honored I am for you welcoming me into your school and into your lives. And I really very much appreciate that. You have all very special to me and you've made me feel part of the Glenelg family. I want you also to know that I am proud of each and every one of you, not only for your accomplishments and achievements, but even more so for the fine young ladies and gentlemen that you are. I am so very proud of each and every one of you. And I am proud and thrilled to be here to watch you cross the stage and get your diplomas. Parents and other family members, thank you for the wonderful young people you have sent us. 
You have done a great job, and we really appreciate that. To Mr. Burton and the staff here at Glen L High School, thank you also for the job you have done for these students. Much appreciated. And to you, the students, what can I say? You're here. You've accomplished it. And there's something I want you to think about. There are three types of people in life, as far as I see. There are some people who stand on the sidelines and watch things happen and don't do very much. I don't want you to be that type of person. There's some people that sit on the sidelines and let things happen and don't do very much. And I don't want you to be that type of person. And then there are some people who take control of their life and make things happen. And that's the type of person I want you to be, and I know you can be, and like it always comes down to choice, and that is choice, and I know that you will make that right choice. And so now, for the very last time, special from me to you, the Glen L graduating class of 2017, live and unplugged, upfront and personal, my closing comments. Thank you, thank you. Work hard, never give up. Maintain your sense of humor. You'll always need that. Use your time wisely. Always do your very best. Have a good positive attitude. Have confidence in yourself and your abilities. Be honest with yourself and others. Respect yourself and others. Always be in control of your attitude, actions, and behaviors. Think before you act and think before you react. Be nice and kind to each other. Follow through on your, your, <laughs> on your commitments and responsibilities. It's the first time I blew it. On your commitments and responsibilities. Use good judgment. Make good decisions and good choices. Keep both your body and mind healthy and strong. And always keep love in your heart. Stay healthy. Please be careful out there. And as always, and most importantly, please come back to your family and friends safely every day. Now I'm going to add a couple of special things to the class of 2017. No matter where you're off to or where you go from here, my hopes and wishes for you are, may you always be safe, may you always be healthy, may you be happy. May your dreams of today become your realities of tomorrow. May there always be more laughs than tears. May your principles and values always guide you. May you always treat others the way you want to be treated. May you always have the courage, strength, and ability to continue to move forward and meet all new challenges. May you do great things and inspire others to do the same. May you make a positive difference in the world and may the world continue to be a better place because you are here. And finally, may your story continue and may the best be yet to come. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Congratulations again. Have a long, great life. Love to you all. And of course, keep smiling. Thank you. Thank you. Members of the Board of Education, Acting Superintendent Dr. Michael Matarano, Central Office Leaders, members of the faculty, honored guests, parents, family, friends, and most importantly, members of the graduating class of 2017, I want to welcome you to the 58th Annual Commencement Ceremony for Glen Allen High School. This ceremony marks the final graduation this year for Howard County Public Schools. And yes, they saved the best for last. Today is a day to celebrate, to celebrate the accomplishments and perseverance of the 306 graduates seated before us. We have much to celebrate, including being ranked by the Washington Post as one of the top schools in the state, our band, orchestra, and chorus units receiving superior ratings in multiple music competitions, our dance team taking first place at the state championships, our cheerleading team winning a county championship, our field hockey team winning county and regional championships. Our football team winning the regional championship and bringing Elgard back to its rightful resting place. 
Our allied bowling team winning the county championship. The wrestling team winning the team county, region, and tournament team championships. Our boys doubles tennis team winning the county and regional championships. The softball team winning the county championship. The boys lacrosse team winning the regional championship and coming up just short in the finals. And the nationally ranked girls lacrosse team winning the county, regional, and state championships for the second year in a row. These graduates have exhibited talent and excellence in competition and in the classroom. With that thought in mind, let me share some highlights about the class of 2017. 95% of the senior class will attend college this fall, earning over $3 million in scholarship money. Yes. There are 10 National Merit Commended Scholars amongst the graduates, including two National Merit Scholarship finalists. And get this. One student had perfect attendance all four years. Yes. As a matter of fact, this graduate has not missed a day of school since sixth grade. Yes, give it up. As you are all aware, this has been a year of new beginnings and a time of transition at Glenelg High School. As I reflect on my first year as principal at Glenelg, it has been an especially rewarding year for me as I have developed and nurtured relationships with our phenomenal students, dedicated staff members, and our engaged and supportive community, all of whom have welcomed me with grace and generous support. One thing I found interesting to learn over, the pa over this past year is that Glen L is a palindrome, which means a word or phrase that means the same forward as it does backward, that reads the same forward as it does backward. Meaning if you reverse the letters in Glen L, it still reads Glen L. Other examples of palindromes are phrases like never odd or even, or no lemon, no melon. I'll let you doodle that with this in your mind later, but the point is, even if you start at the end and flip things backwards, the meaning is still the same. With this theme in mind, I thought it fitting to look to the end, in this case, the end of our lives, and flip things backwards to the present in order to bring a word of inspiration to the class of 2017. There was a study performed at Harvard University which followed a group of individuals over 75 years to help us to understand what mattered most over the course of their lives. The Harvard study participants believed that fame, wealth, and high achievement were what they should pursue to have a good life. But over the 75 years of the study, the research findings showed consistently that the people who fared the best were the people who took the time to nurture relationships with family, with friends, and with the community. As the study participants reached the end of their lives, researchers found that it was not death that most people feared. Instead, it was getting to the end of their lives and realizing that they never really lived. Life's biggest regret turned out not to be the things they did, but instead, instead the things they never did, the risks they never took, the dreams they never realized. Similarly, a recent study in Forbes magazine listed the following top regrets of midlife professionals. Number one, I wish I hadn't listened to other people about what I should study and pursue. Number two, I wish I hadn't let my fears stop me from making change. And number three, I wish I hadn't let, some, let myself become so trapped around money. So what does this all mean, class of 2017, as you stand here on this side of the journey? You are young, you are bright, you are gifted, and the world awaits you to go out and make your mark on it. There are so many opportunities ahead of you, the choices are limitless. But as you focus on taking the world by storm, always remember to keep the end in mind. I know it seems hard to do when you are so young, but believe me, time passes so much quicker than you think. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Figure out what you are passionate about what matters to you and to your community, and make a difference. Leverage your education, your talents, your gifts, and your strengths to make a difference. Figure out what makes your heart sing, what makes you unique. Find, one light, find what lights your fire, what sparks your soul. As I close, I would like to share an excerpt from Dr. Bob Moorhead entitled The Paradox of Our Time in History. 
The paradox of our time in history is that we have taller buildings but shorter tempers, wider freeways but narrower viewpoints. We spend more but have less. We buy more but enjoy it less. We have bigger houses and smaller families, more conveniences but less time. We have more degrees but less sense, more knowledge but less wisdom. There are more experts but fewer solutions. There's more medicine but less wellness. We have multiplied possessions but reduced our values. We talk too much but listen too little. We love too seldom and hate too often. We've learned how to make a living but not a life. We've added years to life but not life to our years. We've been all the way to the moon and back but have trouble crossing the street to meet the new neighbor. We have higher incomes but lower morals, more kinds of food but less nutrition. These are days of fancier houses but broken homes. It is a time when there's much in the show window and nothing in the stock rooms. Graduates, as, I embark on your, as you embark on your careers in life work, remember that your significance will not be based merely on your occupation, but instead on your contributions to society. Be determined to leave this world a better place than you found it. And remember the palindrome and to keep the end in mind. Be informed by your past. Graciously live in your present while being guided by the future you wish to create. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve as your principal for the past year, class of 2017. In closing, I have one final request of you. Today is all about you. Make tomorrow about someone else. Congratulations and best of luck to all of you. Ms. French and Dr. Moderano, as principal of Glen Ellen High School, I hereby certify that the graduates seated before you have met all the requirements for graduation as set forth by the Howard County Public School System and the Maryland State Department of Education. They are eligible to receive a Maryland High School diploma, a certificate of completion, or a certificate of attendance. Big Red Nation, please give a warm welcome to our acting superintendent, Dr. Michael Moderano, as he comes to the podium. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. So I'm the new guy in town. I'm the new superintendent of schools for the Howard County Public School System. And good afternoon to the entire Glen Elk community. It is wonderful to be with you. And as the new guy, it's like the first day of school. You want to fit in. You want to wear the right clothes. You want to make sure that you're accepted. And you really want to make a really good first impression, right? So I thought, I'm just going to be myself today. I want to fit in. I want to be a part of this community so much. And I'm going to show you what I have to offer. Are you ready for this? Here you go. How do you like my socks? So there's been an ongoing competition all week, and I finally hit my stride at the end of the week. You're my favorite school right now. I just want you to know that. <laughs> In all seriousness, ladies and gentlemen, all of our parents, it's an honor to be with you today. I may not know you personally, but I do know you. I know that you have hopes and dreams like every young person across our great country. And I want to share with you just briefly my personal mission, my North Star, in terms of what that is every day. My personal mission statement is five words, to work hard every day and to be kind. As you come across this stage, and as I get to, to meet you for the first time, I want you to think about what your North Star will be. How will you use your gifts, your talents, to make a difference? To work hard every day, to persist, 
to persevere, and to be kind every day to individuals who are less fortunate. Young people into our community, in Howard County we enjoy a very high graduation rate. Our graduation rate is 93 percent, and we should applaud that because it's extremely high. <laughs> However, I'm troubled by that because 7 percent of our young people didn't make it. And as you as young people, I want you to ensure that you're reaching down every day with your hand to help the less fortunate, the individuals who need assistance, so that every child in the Howard County public school system can graduate. And we will not be satisfied until it's 100 percent. So in a short moment, you're going to walk across this stage, and I will be able to shake your hand, and we want to congratulate you as you come across. So without further ado, I congratulate you. I wish you all the best. And now I'd like to introduce our board member, Ms. Sandra French, who will speak to you at this time. Thank you very much, and congratulations. They did save the best for last. On behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations to the Glenelg High School Class of 2017. I was a Glenelg mom a long time ago, but I still remember how your parents probably feel today. It was in 2004, even though it seems like only yesterday, that you and the Howard County Class of 2017 began. Perhaps you were among them when 2,770 students, little guys and gals, entered kindergarten. As you grew in size, you grew in numbers. Another 1,220 students joined you, a 44% increase. People want to come to Howard County for the schools. This year, about 3,990 seniors will walk down this stage to receive their diplomas and certificates. Now, Holton already talked to you about the many gifts, and thank you, Holton. We have a lot to be grateful for. And among them are Howard County citizens. Great schools like Glen High don't just happen. They are created and sustained through the combined efforts of talented educators, engaged students like you, involved families, and a community that not only values education, but also demonstrates that commitment by providing the necessary resources. Between 2004 and today, $164,981 was invested in each one of you for your educational success. This is a wonderful tradition of our democracy that American citizens, both with and without children, willingly, for the most part, willingly support a free and public education for all children. Glenel grads, you have used this gift wisely. While you managed to have some fun along the way, you worked very hard for 13 years to successfully complete your public school career. I heard Mr. Burton talk about your many accomplishments. May I also add the fine arts department, the best, the best, the best. Um, the Susicle. Mr. George, your years of dedication, fantastic orchestra. Um, I'm, I'm a parent from Mr. E's days, but you are still continuing the tradition in music beautifully. So now, many of you have plans to, end, to leave this nurturing community to pursue your dreams. As you do reach out to others as open-hearted as you have to each other at Glenel. But remember that you can pursue your dreams here in Howard County. So when you decide to settle down, preferably employed, come back. Join us not as our children, but as our peers. Enrich our community with your new skills and your creative energies. But if you establish roots elsewhere, keep the community of Howard County in your hearts. 
Remember us as an extended family that valued each one of you and made your educational opportunity a number one priority. Wherever you go, reach out to the next generation of students. Invest in them your tax dollars. But more important, invest your time and your many, many talents. With your diploma, I hand you a charge. Continue this American tradition. Create a haven of safety and love where all children are treasured and where success in education is counted, just like I'll be giving you your diplomas, one student, one mighty gladiator at a time. Congratulations. Now for the naming of our graduates. Casey Marie Bannis. <laughs> Jenna May Barth. Emilio Homero Bayarina. Michael Harris Bishop. Gregory Jacob Brock. Ethan Christopher Campbell. Claudia Renee Carmen. Emily Catherine Chandler. Tabitha Shawnid Braben Kosham. Kyle Edison Daly. Cassandra Faith. Duncan. Sean Michael Elia. Catherine Claire Ellis. Millay Tespa Johannes Haddis. Jeremy Zujin Hess. Christina Michelle Kratzmeyer. Jennifer Elena Miles. Darren Manuel Ibarro Morano. Elizabeth Grace Morgan. Sarah Elizabeth Naughty. Matthew James Pasquino. Linda Michelle Roby. Hannah Alexis Santiago. Cheyenne Samardi. Colton Lee Walls. Ramsey Hazem Ahmad. Caroline Nyan Kwan. Jessica Lynn Lawson. Alexander Boniface Rue Gamba Lefevre. Harrison Lee Montgomery. Holton Rainey Marino. Jenna Noel Sweeney. Delaney Catherine Tracy. Alexandra Marie Wood. Ms. Sandra French, please allow the following Howard County Public School System staff members to award their children's diplomas. Bailey Rose Ehrenberg, presented by Cindy Ehrenberg, Dayton Oaks Elementary School. <laughs> Jacob Blake Austinson, 
presented by Stacy Sauerhoff, Lisbon Elementary School. Zachary Joseph Austinson, presented by Stacy Sauerhoff, Lisbon Elementary School. Miriam Hannah Bregman, presented by Robin Bregman, Bonnie Branch Middle School. Emily Kathleen Buckley, presented by Kathy Buckley, Bushy Park Elementary School. A. Grant Mitchell DiCepolo, presented by Stephanie DiCepolo, Applied Research Lab. <laughs> Bailey Grace Folsom, presented by Mary Folsom, Wild Lake High School. <laughs> Lexi Michelle Hack, presented by Jill Hack, Dunlogan Middle School. <laughs> Sean Michael Kinlock, presented by Jennifer Kinlock, Centennial Lane Elementary School. James Tobin Kittleman, presented by Alan Kittleman, Howard County Executive. Lindsay Aaron Letelier, presented by Kim Letelier, Stevens Forest Elementary School. All right, Sean Michael Kinlock, presented by Jennifer Kinlock, Centennial Lane Elementary School. James Tobin Kittleman, presented by Alan Kittleman, Howard County Executive. Lindsay Aaron Letelier, presented by Kim Letelier, Stevens Forest Elementary School. John Christopher McAuliffe, presented by Sean McAuliffe, Mount Hebron High School. Spencer David Mullinex, presented by Bernadette Mullinex, Centennial High School. <laughs> Zachary Jansen Nitsch, presented by Kelly Nitsch, Patuxent Valley Middle School. Grace Elizabeth Olson, presented by Amy Olson, Lisbon Elementary School. Taylor Lee Ord White, presented by Shireen Ord, Lisbon Elementary School. Matthew Paul Retzbach, presented by Colleen Retzbach, Folly Quarter Middle School. Ryan Michael Shedig, presented by Julia Shedig, Homewood School. <laughs> Thomas Matthew Valenza, presented by Frank Valenza, Longreach High School.
Thomas Mills Walsh, presented by Sharon M. Walsh, Bushy Park Elementary School. Kennedy Christian Workman, presented by Maggie Christian, Office of Early Intervention. Shana Markey Abramson. Richard Edward Abrascado III. Ren Demet Akozer, Shelby Jean Alderton, Carly Regina Allen, Jared Keith Allen, Jordan Ali Anderson, Kendall Patricia Anderson. Bethany Carlene Arrington. Colin Mingyang Ayang. John Ross Avolio. Mason Lee Banner. Jonathan Brady Brajas. Logan Leah Berrigan. <laughs> Megan Julia Baylor. Allison Marie Berdini. Matthew Lee Best. Mateen Shiraz Bahati. Michaela Renee Black. Robert Lloyd Burkowski. Rebecca Lee Bowman. Colin Francis Brinster. Abigail Mary Brodsky. Spencer Renee Brooks. Drew Hiller Brown. Lauren Elizabeth Brown. Gabrielle Catherine Brown. Emma Catherine Book. David, Basil David Basilier. Grace Ann Butera. Grace Ann Butera. I'm sorry. <laughs> David, I am really sorry. It's David Basilier Bussing. I am so sorry. <laughs> Theodore William Callis. Lorraine Faye Kapanos. Amanda Grace Cash. James Douglas Casera. Aaron Melissa Cauley. Julia Ashley Chamberlain. John Anthony Sapola. Adam Keith Cloutier. Nathan William Coburn. Nicole Elizabeth Cosia. Alexis Rachel Cohen. Andrew Robert Colangelo. William Thomas Conley. 
Christian Thomas Cook. Tucker James Kuhn. Caitlin May Corrick. Tyke Theodore Costin. James Patrick Coyne. Catherine Izetta Crane. Kaylin Winifred Crane. Kara Elizabeth Crawford. Shelby Ann Culver. Christopher Michael Curry. Aaron Elizabeth Cutraneo. Craig Sterner Daly. Dakota Thomas Davis. Victoria Nadine Day. Alexandra Lynn DeBlaze. John Patrick Della Zana. Cade Owen Dick. Kendall Elaine Dillard. Brian Philip Doty. Ryan Patrick Dry. Leanne Patricia Duncan. Stephanie Grace Dunkelberger. Samuel White Alicio. Lauren Michelle Elligood. Emma Catherine Ellis. Kristen Ashley Fantano. Michael Raphael Ferracci. Stephen Robert Fasano. Kaylee Miranda Fenton. Megan Matala Fitzpatrick. Alexandra Theodora Fleece. Jared Franklin Fletcher. Trey Larson Folcom. Ethan Zachary Forrest. Hunter Robert Forsyth. Demetrios George Garbus. Devin Henu Geibel. Brittany Lee George. Aiden Michael Gazelle. Martha Elizabeth Gerard. Cameron Adam Galway. Hannah Marie Galway. Sidharth S. Gopinath. Rachel Josephine Gordon. Catherine Ann Grimm. Ujwal Gupta. Kyle Justin Geyer. Anna Marie Hall. Brandon Michael Hall. Bernice Bailey Hanlon. Brooke Olivia Hansen. Anthony James Harding. Matthew Leonard Heimlisher. Timothy Ray Henderson. Anthony James Henry. Carrie Brooke Hessen. Garrett Hunter Hessen. Ryan Aaron Higgins. Kevin Lionel Hill, Jr. Daniel Tan Huang. 
Emmalyn Steins Hoflick. Garrett Michael Houck. Kristen Ann Hume. Elena Ann Huntington. Dylan Ray East. Benjamin Ross Jansen. Keelan Elizabeth Johnson. Danielle Morgan Jones. Rebecca Ann Jones. Brianne Elizabeth Jordan. Owen Matthew Kaiser. Alexandra Nicole Viegas Kerwin. Zayam Khan. Nicholas Junha Kim. Liam Joseph Rogers Kirkhoff. Danielle Daniel Ryan Kivioya. Brooklyn Jesse Klein. Hank Ryan Cooley. Jennifer Chunsu Ko. Samuel Paul Caminos. Alex Timothy Kveck. Emma Marilyn Larson. Michael Bernard Leard. Tyler Gunhi Lee. Christina Marie Leinbach. Joseph Dwayne Leonard Jr. Daniel Defon Lee. Charles Allen Linkus. John Kemp Lozer. Jason Nathaniel Lohman Jr. Alan Wailun Liu. Connor William Lutz. Michael Patrick Lyons. Reese Eric Maiden. Trevor Dylan Main. Natalie Ann Millett. Daniel Joseph Mansfeld Jr. Brooke Elaine Martin. Derek Lewis Marks. Casey Lee Misavages. Connor Clark McIntyre. Alex Patrick McKenzie. Jornay Ananda McMillan. Alexander Forrest Medley. Alexander Eugene Melvin. Emily Ann Mahalski. James Andrew Milkey. Hayden Richard Mick. Jacob Emery Miller. Matthew Ryan Miller. Shannon Mary Milligan. Alfredo Mr. Kelly III. Kevin Lloyd Mitchell. Guy Elaine Edmund Mobeka. Emma Katarina Moog. Catherine Carol Moore. John William Warren. Samantha Abigail Moyer. Theodore Jeffrey Munesis. Garrett David Merry. Kara Elise Nardone. Abigail Joy Nichols. 
Caitlin Marie Oates. Benjamin Thomas Odachowski. Sydney Aaron O'Rourke. Jennifer Catherine Pagani. Juliana Maria Pagani. Elena Elizabeth Pagnata. Annabelle Siong Park. Jakeshan Pashant Patel. Marissa Renee Patsy. Charles Henry Heiser Pauling. Connor Riley Payne. Sarah Caitlin Phelps. Megan Francis Pitos. Joseph David Pibarowski. Lauren Hunter Paquette. Jeffrey Donald Powell Jr. Zachary Martin Price. Gabrielle Diane Rahuba. Griffin Charles Rafferty. Julia Alexis Rankin. Ladea Leslie Ratliff. Christian Jacob Roche. Courtney Michelle Renahan. Adil Ahmed Rezvi. Megan Grace Robbins. Catherine Grace Robertson. Alexa Morgan Roach. Zachary Kern Rogers. Austin John Roman. Rebecca Emily Romano. Anthony Mark Rosenthal. Sarah Marie Rosso. Allison Rose Rosamondo. Haley Marie Rares Sames. Ellen Grace Sawitsky. Nicholas Joseph Scaldera. Morgan Lynn Shepfer. Elijah Taub Schwelling. Emma Grace Sedlack. Marta Rosa Shane. Anya Marie Shapiro. Justin Sh Justin Chin Shaw. Paige Alexis Sheldrake. Courtney Marie Shoemaker. Stephen Barton Shoemaker. Nabil Siddiqui. Yusuf Abdul Rahim Siddiqui. Abby Renee Soltis. Connor Nicholas Stanley. Stephen Robert Stetson. Cameron Jordan Stewart. Catherine Elise Stickley. Charles Allen Studdard. Gabriel Vincent Taylor. Andrew Gary Ty. Connor Thomas Thode. Maya Emily Sang. Anna Nicole Turvin. Emma Claire Twig. 
Marie Ivy Twig. Jared Austin Waddell. Brenton Hollis Wade. Martin Wang. Trevor Halliday Werlinick. Austin Robert Weeder. Althea Hope Wilhelm. Joseph Luke Wilhelm. Noah Daniel Williamson. Mitchell Harrison Wingert. Sean Thomas Witchen. Justin Lee Wolf. Julia Doris Wolfrey. Andrew Martin Wright. Anne Nguyen Sia. Esther Mutaw Shu. Dan Zhu. Now for the final graduate of the 2017 Howard County from Glenelg High School, Blake Michael Zuko. I'm Jessica Lawson, SGA President, Class of 2017. And I'm Harrison Montgomery, Graduating Senior, Class of 2017. Congratulations, graduates. Class of 2017, please rise. As a class, we would like to thank all of the Glenelg staff and faculty that have helped us grow in these last four years. And a special thanks to our families, friends, and the Glenelg community for everything you have done and continue to do for us. All right, graduating class, it's time to plan what we've learned in these last four years and grow it into something wonderful. But first, let's put high school behind us. Join me in turning your tassels from right to left. Congratulations. <laughs>